Hey there, Mr. Olson here. Let's do some math. So, we got a warm up, fairly simple stuff. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I expect that you can do these equations if you cannot, for whatever reason, uh, please talk to me. I'll be happy to help you out with them, all right? But at this point of the year, I assume that you know how to do equations. Today's objective is we can identify types of transformation. It's going to be good. We're going to start with a bit of a warm-up on uh, graphing lines. It's something that is a really important skill in 8th grade math, so I want to make sure that we know this. Uh, this I will go over with you. If you have graph paper on you, use it. If not, you can Google a graph paper sheet and print that off, or just come into class and I can give you one. You will be using this for the transformation stuff we're doing as well, so that's an important thing. So y equals 1 half x minus 3. For that equation, the slope is 1 half, the y-intercept, negative 3. So we start the graph at negative 3, and then we go up 1 to the right 2. Up 1, right 2. Hopefully this is coming back to you pretty quickly. Hopefully you actually did this without me even coming over with you. 7 and 8, try those out. Pause. And we're back. So 7, our slope is that 2 there, which we can change to 2 over 1. Y-intercept, 1. So we start at the 1 here, we go up 2 to the right 1. Up 2, right 1. And there's a one. Okay, number eight, y equals x plus two. So slope, if the x is by itself, you can think of that as being like one x or one over one x. Slope is one over one. Y-intercept, two, so we start at the two there and go up one to the right one. Okay. Transformation. So this is our big new thing. Um, transformation, think we've, think we've heard the word transform before. Where have you heard the word transform? If you're like most other students, you are saying transformers, yes. There's two kinds of transformers in math. You have your Autobots and you have your Decepticons. And the Autobots are the good ones that, no, I'm just joking, it's just transformers in the week. Transformers, I will just say, um, I am so glad that whoever named that toy named it Transformers. I bet before Transformers were a toy, when a teacher taught transformations to their students, they had to explain what the word transform meant. They had to become a vocabulary word, they had to memorize what transform means. It means to change it from one thing to another. With Transformers, we're already used to that idea that transform means change things from one thing to another. Um, yeah, it's super nice. I'm so glad they named the toy Transformer. It was actually a Japanese toy originally that they imported to the US, uh, Hasbro, uh, a toy company. And when they imported it, they decided to call it Transformers, and thank you. But whoever came up with that, they're one of my heroes in math, all right? Transformation is to change a figure based off a specific rule. Sadly, it's not as exciting as Transformers. You never change like a square and it transforms into a helicopter or a semi-truck or a robot or whatever. No, more likely the square will change into a slightly different square that's slightly bigger or smaller or in a different place on the graph. It may even change into a rectangle, but it's very unusual. So, here we've got a triangle. Think about different ways I might change this on the graph. Again, we're not anything drastic, just sort of minor changes in how it looks, how it is. So, some types of transformations that kids have recommended have been, maybe it gets bigger or smaller. That one is one that we won't use too often. Uh, it's one of the less common ones to look at. It's called a dilation, kind of like your eye dilates when you go to the eye doctor, that the pupil expands or shrinks. And this gets bigger or smaller. We also have stretches where it might just stretch one way or the other. That it might stretch to the left, or, or stretch uh, horizontally, or stretch vertically. Um, those are not technically dilations, but they are, we just call it a stretch. Rotation is one that a lot of students have suggested. You could rotate it around, so you could rotate it. Some students suggested flips. We also call that a uh, reflection. Reflection is a type of uh, transformation. And then last, and this is the one that people seem to come up with the least, is just to move it around. Translation, moving each point in the figure the same direction and distance, or directions and distances, depending on what's happening there. Let's look at that with this one. Let's say that I translate it over to here. I think of translate, when you move to a different part of the world, you have to change your words, you have to change your stuff that you say sometimes, depending on what part of the world you end up in. 
Um, and so you have to translate your words. In the same way that this one moves to a different part of the graph, and it gets translated to go there, and then it translates to that part of the graph. Um, it's still the same shape, and as much as possible, when you translate a word, translate a sentence, translate a paragraph, we want to keep the same meaning as much as we can. It's not always as possible as a like in languages, but in math, it's very easy to translate. That's our easiest transformation. See if you can identify what was the translation here. Oh, and one other thing you should point out, there's a lot of vocab in this. Um, when we translate a figure, the new one we put in with dotted lines, old one, solid lines. We call the old one the pre-image. And then we call the uh, new one the image. And that's a thing. Okay, so, see if you can figure out what the translation is going from the pre-image to the image. Pause the video. Okay, so you might have set translated to the left by one. That's a direction and distance. Each point moves to the left by one. If you notice, these points down here are all one left of the points up here. Oh, let's name these points. A, B, C. We call these new ones A with a little apostrophe there, B with a little apostrophe, and C with a little apostrophe. Now here is my other favorite thing with transformations. Those little apostrophes are called primes. That's how it's been called forever and ever and ever. And yet, someone that invented, helped to uh, name the transformers, came up with the name Optimus Prime. So it's a transformer, transformation, that's a math thing, and his name has the word prime in it, which is a word that has to do with transformations in math. How cool is that? So basically, whoever named him Optimus Prime made a wink for generations of students. I mean, Transformers came out in the 80s, before I was born. And every student since then, they grew up with Transformers in whatever form, has this idea that Prime means transformation. The transformations are Prime. So, yeah, thank you, whoever named them Optimus Prime. I like to imagine that they're in this meeting, they're discussing what they should name each one, and the guy that wants to name him Optimus Prime, he comes up with the idea, he says, uh, I think this guy's the coolest looking one. Let's make him like the leader of the good guys, all right? And they're like, yeah, he is the coolest. He's like, I think of a name that's like super cool. What if we named him Optimus Prime? And everyone's looking, he's like, dude, that is so cool. And he's like, I know. Because see, in math, we have transformations. And transformations, you call the new transformation Prime. And, that, and everyone's like, yeah, whatever, who cares? Let's just name him that. Uh, this is one of my mathematical heroes that may or may not actually exist. Maybe, maybe it was just random, they called it Optimus Prime, but I, I don't think so. I believe that someone came up with that name because it was a transformer, or because it was a math thing. It's also trans translating down. See if you can figure out how far down it goes. One thing, I, pause the video. One thing I have a lot of students say is that it translates down by three. That it goes from here, down three, to there. That's not accurate. That's the bottom of the shape going to the top of the shape. Really, you should check from the top of the shape to the top of the shape. If you look here, it goes to the left one, and down one, two, three, four, five. Or it could go from this bottom left corner to the bottom left corner, from C to C prime. If you always do your translations, your transformations going from the point to the same point, you'll do so much better at them. To the left one, down one, two, three, four, five. So, yeah, works out pretty nicely. Find the coordinates for each point. There's actually a pattern to how these uh, translate, for how these move from one to the other. Pause the video as you find those coordinates. Pause. And we're back. So the coordinates of A, its x-coordinate is 3 there, and its y-coordinate is 4, 3 comma 4. B, that is 4 comma 2. C, 2 comma 2. A prime, 2 comma negative 1. B prime, 3 comma negative 3. C prime, 1 comma negative 3. So look at the point from A to A prime, B to B prime, C to C prime. Look at the patterns of the coordinates, because there is a pattern there. Pause the video, see if you can find it. And we're back. Hopefully you notice that the x-coordinate decreased by 1, the y-coordinate decreased by 5. Um, which correspond with the left 1, left is x direction, negative, and down 5, that's y direction, negative. So, we can actually make a little chart here. Transforms to the right add to the x-coordinate, translates to the left, subtract from x-coordinate. When it translates up, add to y, 
when it translates down, subtract from y. Okay, so here I've got two different shapes. We'll call this one uh, D, E, F, G. This one we're going to translate it down 3 and to the right 5. Here we'll continue on the alphabet H, I, J, K. And we're going to translate that one, let's say, up 4 and right one. See if you can do this correctly. Pause the video. And we go back. Okay, the key to translations, one point at a time. We take point D, we move it down three. One, two, three. To the right five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's right there. And then we can take E and move that one down three. One, two, three. Move it to the right five. One, two, three, four, five. And F. Oh, and label each point as you redraw it. D prime, E prime. By labeling it, that makes it easier to identify the other right point in the right spots. I have so many students that they draw two points, and they know they have a rectangle that is three by two, and they accidentally draw it going up like this. Because they aren't thinking about it, they're just focused on uh, drawing it in quickly. No. So D prime, E prime, F prime, G prime. F prime, that's going to go down 1, 2, 3, to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then G prime, down 1, 2, 3, to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and then we uh, fill in the dots here. Great. Dotted lines, always dotted lines for the transformation. Find the coordinates of that. Pause the video. Okay, so D is at negative 4, comma 4. D prime, and notice this will be following along our rules here. D prime is at 1, comma 1. Notice 1, 5 more than that negative 4. And then the one here, 3 less than that positive 4. D prime and D. E is at negative 1, 4. E prime is at 4, comma 1. F, negative 1, 2, F prime, uh, 4, negative 1. G, negative 4, comma 2, G prime, 1, negative 1. Okay, problem number 13. So up 4 to the right 1. Um, so to each point, if you did not get this one correct, try this one on your own now that I've shown you that method. Pause. And a rec. So H goes up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the right 1, and we call that H prime. J up 1, 2, 3, 4, to the right 1. The reason I did J after H is that by putting these two in, the rest of the shape kind of has to fill in the same way. There's no way to change that shape at that point. So it works out kind of nicely. So this must be I prime and K prime. That's sort of my method is use opposite corners to do your translations. Okay, find the coordinates of each of these. Hopefully you got that one right, by the way. So H, whoops, H is at negative three, negative two, H prime, negative two, two. I is at negative two comma negative two, I prime at negative 1, 2. J is at negative 2, negative 3. J prime, negative 1, 1. And K is at negative 2, 1. K prime, wait, K is not at negative 2, 1. K is at negative 3, something else. Negative 3, negative 3. K prime, negative 2, 1. There we go. I was doing K prime for K. Again, notice that the X coordinates increase by 1 each time. The Y coordinates de increase by 4 each time. So, yeah. We call these, we call some transformations isometries. Isometry means 
a transformation where the image and the pre-image are congruent. Now, what does congruent mean? Congruent means exactly the same in every way. We quite often also say that all, all corresponding measures, sorry, I should say corresponding measure, measures, So two shapes are congruent if all corresponding measures are equal. So our translations isometries, think about that for a bit, look at your paper. Hopefully you said yes they are. Here for instance, D to E are three, D and E are three apart, three squares apart, D prime and E prime are three squares apart, E and F two apart, E prime F prime two apart. Uh, here, uh, A is two above and one to the right of C, a prime, two above and one to the right of C prime. Corresponding measures equal. All angles the same, all distance is the same. Translation is one, one isometry. There are two others, see if you can think what they are. So, hopefully you came up with rotation. Let's actually draw a shape to use for this. So translation, I move this triangle anywhere I want, Still the same triangle. Still the same triangle here, here. Over here it isn't. No, wait, it is. Rotation. We rotate the heck out of this triangle. Still the same triangle. Rotate it even more. Ha! Ah, let's go the other way, clockwise now. Or counterclockwise, which everybody else can go. Still, same triangle. Okay, translation, rotation. The last one is a reflection. Reflection is the trickiest one. Think about these with a piece of paper. If you have a piece of paper handy uh, where you're sitting, uh, put it on a table and move the paper around. You can slide it around, you can translate it very easily. As you're sliding it, you probably have rotated it a little bit. If not, try rotating it now. You can do that pretty easily. Now try reflecting it, kind of flipping it over. Notice it takes me more steps in my software to do this. I have to go over to different menu options to flip it around. But I can flip it. I can flip it good. Um, or with your paper, in order to flip it over, you have to take it off the table a little bit, whereas translation or rotation you can do more easily. Rotation, reflection kind of like flips around the entire coordinate plane, which is sort of interesting. It kind of reverses everything, more so than these other ones do. But it still is an isometry. We have not changed any measures when you rotate it, or when you reflect it. Or when you translate, none of these change them. Dilation we talked about a little bit, making it bigger or smaller. Dilation also doesn't, uh, is not an isometry because it does change some of the measures. All of our lengths are longer. Although notice the angles stay the same. That's important. Let's look briefly at reflections. Translation, we need to know two things, which direction it's translating and how far. Reflection is cool because we only need to know one thing. We need to know what line we are reflecting across. Think of it as like what's a mirror that we're... <coughs> What is our mirror that we are reflecting across? So let's say you reflect it across the y-axis. What we have to do is we can look at this point here, we'll call it point, what was our last point we had? K, so L. L is one square to the right of the uh, mirror, so it goes to one square to the left of the mirror, L prime. Let's call this point M. M is one square to the right of the mirror, it goes one square to the left of the mirror, to M prime. And N, is one square to the right of the mirror, and it moves to one square to the left of the mirror. I just realized that the three letters I have here are the initials of a friend of mine. Anyway, um, and that creates a reflection. See how it's kind of reflected here, it's backwards from what that was? N, wa N was to the right of M, N prime is to the left of M prime. Kind of reverses things that way. And we can reflect across any line, we can reflect across the x-axis. We can reflect across any vertical or horizontal line. Those are the easiest lines to deal with. 
L is two points below the line, so move it to two points above the line. N is four points below, moves to four points above. M is four points below, moves to four points above. Um, yeah. We can even reflect across uh, diagonal lines if we want to. One of the most important diagonal lines to reflect across is the line y equals x. Let's say you get the uh, inverse of a function is by reflecting across that line. So there's a variety of different things that can happen there. Okay. Rotation. Rotation, we need three things we know about to rotate a uh, line, to rotate a figure. One is the point we're rotating around. If we rotate around here or here, we get different results. Or if we rotate around here, we get a different result. Imagine if you like put a pin in that spot on the graph and then spun it around there. That's how that rotation works. We can rotate it from a point inside of the figure, or just along one of the sides. It doesn't have to be it. We can rotate it from a point outside of the figure. For right now, let's just focus on points on the figure itself. So say this point right here. So we're going to rotate around that point, one comma negative one. We need to decide which we rotate, clockwise, counterclockwise or clockwise. Let's go counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, there we go. And then how far do we rotate it? 90 degrees and 180 degrees, the most common ways to rotate, and let's just do that. So we have it right here is our original, so our first point was down here. Okay, so we'll call this L, wait, we have N, O, O is the next point. O, O is gonna rotate and stay in the same spot because we're rotating around. So O prime is just in the exact same spot. O prime or Optimus prime, whatever. P, P is right here. Notice that it is along this line here. We rotate that line 90 degrees that way, so it creates a 90 degree angle. And that tells us where P prime is gonna be, right there. And then Q is right here. We wanna get a 90 degree angle with that, which goes up to here, Q prime. And then we dot the lines. I didn't actually dot that to start with, I should have. Anyway, O, P, Q translate, or rotates to O prime, P prime, Q prime. By rotating negative, from, ne from the point one comma negative one, counterclockwise, 90 degrees. Rotations are the hardest ones to draw, uh, most difficult of all, of these ones so far. Dilations can be pretty tricky tr too, but uh, I actually found some tricks to dilations that I like pretty well. I'll probably go over that next time. So, see you later. Translations are the ones you should know best, um, and really you don't have to do no too deep about any of these, but you should be somewhat familiar with them. See you later. Bye.